Hi everyone, welcome to Wednesday story time. Today we have Goldilocks and the Three Bears to go along with our fairy tale theme. This is one of my favorite classics of all time. So let's read it. Once upon a time, there was a pretty little cottage far away in the middle of the woods. The cottage had a thatched roof and the windows had green shutters. At the corner of the house grew a great dog rose bush that bloomed with pink roses in the spring and red, red roses in the autumn. There were beehives at the back of the cottage and on that sunny side of a tall spruce that gave shelter from the north wind was a large ant hill. In the little cottage lived a family of bears. Father bear was big and burly. Mother bear was small and soft and friendly. And funny little baby bear was just a teeny cub rolling about and having fun all day long. In the living room, father bear had a huge chair where he sat and read his newspaper. In a medium chair, mother bear sat to knit or mend clothes. There was a very tiny chair too. It belonged to baby bear. He could sit for hours and listen to fairy tales that Father Bear liked to tell him. On the big dining table, there were three porridge bowls. There was a very big bowl for Father Bear, a medium-sized bowl for Mother Bear, and a very small bowl for Baby Bear. In the bedroom, there were three beds, a great sturdy bed for Father Bear, a cozy medium bed for Mother Bear, and a very small and very nice little bed for Baby Bear. Early one morning, as Mother Bear was pouring porridge into their three bowls, a drop spilled over and burnt her hand. The porridge was so steaming hot that what it would have to cool down so that the bears wouldn't burn their mouths eating it. And since it was a fine, sunny day, Mother Bear suggested that they would go for a walk in the woods while the porridge was cooling. The bears loved the idea and left without taking time to lock the door. On the very same sunny morning, a little blue-eyed girl with yellow hair was walking in the woods. Her name was Goldilocks. She had run away from home without telling anyone. When she caught sight of a nice little cottage, she was very curious. What a nice little cottage, she cried out loud. I wonder who lives there. I must find out at once. And so she went right up to the house. First she peeped through the windows and then through the keyhole, although she knew very well what she shouldn't. But now she was just so curious that she had to know who lived in the sweet little cottage. Carefully, she tried the door. It was open. She stepped in and slowly looked around, but there was no one there. What a nice and cozy little room. When Goldilocks was inside the cottage and saw the table with the three porridge bowls on it, she was suddenly very hungry. If she really had been a well-behaved little girl, she would have certainly waited till the bears came home. They were very friendly and kind, even if they seemed a bit clumsy, and they would surely have invited her for breakfast. But when she smelt the lovely porridge, she simply couldn't control herself. First, she tasted the porridge in Father Bear's big bowl, but it was too hot and burnt her tongue. Goldilocks got angry, though no one had asked her to touch the porridge. She went on to the next bowl and tasted Mother Bear's porridge, but it was too cold, and she went over to Little Baby Bear's porridge bowl, and in this bowl, the porridge was just right, neither too hot nor too cold. It was just that there was too little of it. Goldilocks was annoyed. The porridge was so good that she wanted more of it. Goldilocks sat down in Father Bear's big, heavy chair, but it was too big and hard, so she moved over to Mother Bear's chair. It was smaller and looked quite nice and comfortable. Oh, this chair won't do either. It's much too soft, thought Goldilocks, who was just really rather spoiled. Just then, she caught sight of Baby Bear's nice little chair. It was just the right size for her, and it didn't look too hard or too soft. It looked just right. Goldilocks walked over to Baby Bear's chair and sat down, but she sat down so hard that the little chair went crash, and Goldilocks landed on the floor. Terrified, she looked all around, but she was still quite alone in the house. Then Goldilocks decided to look upstairs. When she entered the bedroom and saw the comfortable beds, she felt so sleepy and tired. She wanted very much to go to bed and nap for a while. First, she climbed up and lay down on Father Bear's big bed, but the pillow was much too high for her head, so she crept over to Mother Bear's bed instead. 
but this bed was much too high under her feet. So she went over to Baby Bear's bed, and Baby Bear's bed was just, was very comfortable and just the right size. So Goldilocks crawled in and pulled up the cover, and after a while, she was fast asleep. Meanwhile, the three bears had finished their morning walk and were on their way back for their breakfast porridge. When they entered the cottage and saw the porridge bowls, they were surprised. They opened their eyes wide and looked at the bowls, and Father Bear growled in his low bass voice, Somebody has tasted my porridge. Mother Bear looked at her bowl and found the spoon stuck in the porridge. Then she moaned in her soft, mild voice, Someone has tasted my porridge, too. At the same moment, little baby bear began to whine and whimper and said in his squeaky voice, Someone has eaten up all my porridge. The three bears realized that a stranger had entered their house while they were out walking. They started to search the cottage. Goldilocks had forgotten to fluff the cushion in father's, father bear's big chair. When father bear discovered this, he shouted in his rough bass, bass voice, Someone has been sitting in my chair. Mother Bear looked at her own chair and noticed the cushion had fallen down to the floor. She whispered in her soft, frightened voice, Someone has been sitting in my chair, too. At the same moment, a cry was heard from little baby bear. He had just discovered that his fine little chair was all broken. Someone has been sitting my chair all to pieces, he cried. Now the bears thought it was best to search the whole house, so they went upstairs and into the bedroom. Goldilocks had made a mess of the big bed, and Father Bear noticed it at once. Someone has been lying in my bed, he growled, very upset, and went to smooth down the pillow. Mother Bear looked at her bed and saw that its cover was crumpled. Someone has been lying in my bed too, she cried, surprised and angry at the same time. Now little baby bear had toddled up to his bed, and what did he see? He saw a little girl with a golden hair tucked up in his bed and sleeping peacefully. This was going too far. He could hardly believe his eyes. Then he cried out in his squeaky voice, Someone is still lying in my bed. Goldilocks was sound asleep. She was dreaming she was out in the woods and heard the wind and wind sigh and thunder rumble in the distance and far away someone was talking about a bed but when little baby bear cried out she woke up at once and looked around startled and dazed what on earth was going on three angry bears stood staring at her lying in a strange little bed poor goldilocks was scared to death she didn't know after all that the three bears were very kind and had no intention of hurting her she jumped off the bed, taking the covers with her. She raced out of the room and down the stairs and out of the cottage. She ran all the way home through the woods without turning her head once. Back home, her mother stood on the steps, watching for her little girl. Where have you been, child? I've been so worried. Come in now and have your porridge. Goldilocks was so glad to be home again. She promised herself and her mother not to be so curious and to never run away again. A person who is very curious is likely to make others furious. The end. Hope you guys enjoyed the story. See you next time.